tradition where a man comes to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi sa'ala rajulun rasulallah faqala ya rasulallah inna na'kul wa la nashba' ya rasulallah we eat but we're never satiated have you seen some people they're always hungry subhanallah they're always hungry we eat and this is assuming there's no medical issue we eat but we're never satiated we're always hungry look at what the prophet says sometimes these things are spiritual problems and not physiological problems the prophet says la'allakum taftariquna an ta'amikum fajtami'u alayh the Prophet says, it seems that you do not eat together. Everyone eats by themselves. And this is one of the calamities of our time. People are under one roof. It's one family. The husband is eating by himself. The wife is eating in the kitchen by herself. All of the kids have their own food and they're eating alone and they're watching their iPhones and their iPads. The whole family is dispersed. The Prophet says, come together and eat together. And he says, and say Bismillah. Eat together. Eat in congregation. Eat as a family. And say Bismillah. You barak lakum fi. Allah will put barakah in your food. It will nourish you. There will be barakah in your food. If we did this. In another hadith, one last hadith relating to the importance of saying Bismillah. There's a hadith from the Prophet that says, Man akal al halal. If you eat halal, it's not that Allah is just not going to punish you. Allah rewards you for eating halal. We think that if I eat haram, Allah will punish, punish me. But I, if I eat halal, there's no punishment. It's not that there's no punishment, there is a reward. The hadith says, Man akal al halal qam ala raksihi malakun yastaghfiru lahu hatta yafrugha min akli. The Prophet says, The one who eats halal and says, Bismillah, an angel stands above his head and asks Allah to forgive that person until they finish eating. You earn the dua of malaika when you eat halal and when you mention and you invoke the name of Allah. There's another hadith from the Prophet where he says, and this is something that we should try to implement. الطعام إذا جمع أربع خصال فقد تم. A meal that combines the following four characteristics is a perfect meal in the eyes of Allah. We want to make sure that we eat in a way that is pleasing to Allah. Number one, إذا كان من halal. Number one, we said there are four. Number one is that ensure that what you are eating is halal. Number two, وكثرت الأيدي. Allah loves a meal where there are multiple hands stretched over it. Meaning people are eating together. وَسُمِّيَ فِي أَوَّلِ Number three is a meal where you begin by saying Bismillah. وَحُمِدَ اللَّهُ فِي آخِرِ And you end the meal by saying Alhamdulillah. If you do these four, Allah will put barakah in that meal. And this is, this is a perfect meal. There is a, a hadith from Imam Al Mujtaba, and we'll conclude because tonight is the night of the Ashab. Imam Al Mujtaba, he says, There are 12 manners 
that we should observe when we have a meal. Twelve. يجب على كل مسلم أن يعرفها. Every Muslim should know these manners. أربع منها فرض. Four of them are فرض. They are obligatory. Now here, obligatory doesn't mean wajib, but it means that these are very important أخلاقي teachings. They are very important ethical practices. وَأَرْبَعٌ سُنَّةٌ وَأَرْبَعَةٌ سُنَّةٌ Four of them are the prophetic tradition. وَأَرْبَعٌ تَأْدِيبٌ And four are related to etiquette. فَأَمَّا الْفَرْضُ The Imam says, ask for the necessary manners. The four that are the most important is فَالْمَعْرِفَةِ وَالْرِضَى وَالتَّسْمِيَةِ وَالشُّكْرِ معرفة. First, you should know that this food is a ni'mah of Allah. That it comes from Allah. You need to recognize the source of this blessing, Allah. And when you eat, that's why it's recommended to sit humbly when you eat food. Because food is a great ni'mah. You should treat it with sanctity. Number two, ar-ridha. Be content. Don't complain that I don't like this food. Why didn't you make something else? This is bad manners, brothers and sisters. Imam al-Mujtaba, he says, be content. There are almost one billion people in the world today that are undernourished. Don't whine that this is chicken and I wanted beef or this is pizza and I wanted sushi. This is, this is shameful if this is how we speak. Be content. وَالتَّسْمِيَةِ Say Bismillah and end by saying Alhamdulillah. Express gratitude. So these are four. The four that are sunnah, that are the prophetic legacy is فَالْوُضُوءُ قَبْلَ الطَّعَامِ Do wudu before you eat. You may ask, I thought wudu is for salah. Remember that you're an abd of Allah. Everything that you do is sacred. Everything that you do is for Allah, so be in a state of tahara. Waljulus ala al janib al aysar. It's recommended to sit on the ground, on the floor. And when you sit, put your weight on your left side. This might be a health tip. And then the Imam says. وَالْأَكْلُ بِثَلَاثِ أَصَابِعِ Now again, today we have silverware, but it's mustahab to eat with your hands and to eat with three fingers. وَلَعْقُ الْأَصَابِعِ The Prophet, when he would eat, he used to lick his fingers. Imam al-Baqir explains. He says, because Rasulullah did not even want to waste the residue of the food. Some of us, we throw... A lot of food away. Rasulullah doesn't even want to waste the particles that are on his fingers. And the final four that are etiquette is what? فَالْأَكْلُ مِمَّا يَلِيكُ If you're sitting at a table, Imam al-Mushtaba says, eat from the food that is close to you. Don't do acrobatics and try to extend and grab what's on the other side. It's akhlaq to eat what is close to you. وَتَصْغِيرَ اللُّقْمَةً Don't put large morsels of food in your mouth. Small bites. You even look more dignified. You're not chewing too much food. وَتَجْرِيدُ الْمَضْغِ Chew your food well. وَقِلَّةُ النَّظَرْ فِي وُجُوهِ النَّاسِ And do not look at people while they are eating. This is the adab that the Ahlul Bayt have taught us with respect to food.